Astronomy is amazing. There are other hobbies, but astronomy costs more than them, and anything that costs more is automatically better. You might think that you're cool because you can play that riff from the weekend on your guitar, but that's peanuts compared to astronomy. In the last decade, we've seen the best images of space ever taken by named telescopes that float in space, but also a sudden rapid increase in quality from images taken from ground-based telescopes, even telescopes you can buy in Walmart. But one thing all these great images have in common is that straight out of the camera, they look like poop. Before the data that costs billions of dollars to acquire ends up as a beautiful wallpaper background behind your favourite mobile game folder, teams of scientists hand over their precious data to the professional astrophotographers who reduce and calibrate the data with dark and flat frames, subtracting all the garbage in the image to reveal the glistening diamond in the rough. G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from Byron Bay Observatory and I'm here to talk to you about flats. Not those kinds of flats, flat frames. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do flats and how I'm doing it now. Roll the intro. Now I have a confession. I really am pretty lazy with flat frames. In fact, I don't tend to use them. My data is pretty good. When I look at it, it's, uh, I mean, look at this, it's sort of, it's pretty flat anyway. I don't have a lot of dust motes on my gear. I keep it pretty clean, but there is a slight darkening on the edges. And that becomes really obvious when you stack. You can see in this stacked image, it's clearly dark and a slightly different color on one side. This is because the red, green, and blue filters will have gradients in them. And you have vignetting gradients as well. And so everything gets a bit random by the time you stack them and combine them all together. So what you want to do is apply the flat frames to your subs before you stack each filter. Then when you go to combine them all together later, you won't have this vignetting around the edges. And you can kind of get away with it. If you're lazy like me, you can crop it out so that people don't see it by the time you post it on Instagram, or you can use feathering in Photoshop and try and lighten the corners. And that's stuff I've been doing for a long time. But what really got me into flats recently was doing that collaboration with two other great astrophotographers and I was embarrassed. I better get my shit together and actually show them that I know what I'm doing. Uh, so I did and I worked out how to do flats and it was easier than I ever imagined. So I'm currently getting some data on this dragon nebula near the tarantula nebula and I'm going to apply some flats. I've already done my hydrogen. I'll do oxygen now to show you exactly what I mean. So let's go into the observatory. <music> I might have seen people using like light panels, like flat panels in order to illuminate what you're shooting in order to get a flat frame and that's pretty fancy, there's total fancy pants and kind of unnecessary because you can point the telescope at a wall, you can point the telescope at a white t-shirt, you can point it at the sky. Uh, as long as you don't have too much light, uh, it can be sort of dimly lit like this, it will be able to take those flat frames. So what I tend to do is just shoot the flats exactly where the telescope is parked in the observatory. Now you might not have that situation, so you can just take your telescope inside as long as you don't move anything, as long as you don't touch anything on the camera or the rotation or anything like that. Keep the same gain, keep the same temperature when you're shooting the flats and just shoot something blank. It's too hot in here, I'm going back inside. Okay, I'm in Nina in the Flat Wizard. So we're just gonna click on Flat Wizard here and I'm gonna change my filter to Oxygen because that's the flat I want. I have the observatory ready to go. The, I just opened the door so there's a little bit of light in there. And it has the min exposure, the maximum exposure, 10 seconds, and it will figure out what's the best exposure to do. It's got step size, the histogram, leave everything else default. Like Nina knows what it's doing. Uh, so I'm just going to click play here and it's going to start taking some test exposures to see exactly how much light is in there. You can see some dust motes, you can see the vignetting quite clearly. This is all this stuff that we're going to subtract and there it goes. It already knows what the ideal exposure is and now it's running through all the exposures and it's going to take 25 of them, uh, which is what I set up here. It's got the same gain that the camera currently has now. Uh, which is the same that I was using last night. It's one by one bidding, same as what I normally use. 
Uh, we don't have to slew or anything like that. We're, I'm just leaving it pointed at the wall here, so that's fine. And I can speed this up with the magic of television. And we're done. Now we have to stack these in such a way that we can use them as flats. So let's jump over to Pix Insight. Okay, in the flat wizard folder in Nina, we should find our flats, add them all in. There's 25 of them. Now we want to do a few things to get these settings right for flats. For flats, we want to change this to multiplicative. Weights don't care. Uh, we do want to generate a integrated images. That's all fine, that's all fine. Now when it comes to rejection, rejection one, we want to change this to percentile clipping and equalize fluxes. Um, all of those ticked and clip high range as well. And that should be about it. We can now stack this using the, now we hit that little dot there to apply global and it should integrate our oxygen flat frame. Okay, it gives us some rejection maps here which we can close and just stretch the integration it leaves us with with control A and then you can see the dust motes there, you can see the vignetting. This is all the stuff it's going to remove. Great, I'm going to save this off as a master flat for oxygen and I'm going to save that in the project itself. Keep it as 32-bit. Now how do we know if this worked? Okay, I'm in Pixie inside. What we want to do is apply this master flat to one of these subs. Here's an oxygen sub. You can see it's super noisy because no darks have been applied yet. And also there's this vignetting on the edge where it gets dark in the corners. Not very obvious just yet, but once everything's stacked, it gets super obvious. So we're going to go into image calibration here and we're going to add our target frames, which is just this, for the example, just this one oxygen that we've got in here. And I will add that. And then I'm going to untick all of these, except for master dark and master flat. In the master dark, I will add my dark and I'm going to untick optimize. And in master flat, I'm going to add my flat frame, which we just created. There it is. Now I'm just going to apply global again, and it should generate a nicely calibrated sub. Now we can check that by going into the folder and so now we have our uncalibrated one and our calibrated sub with underscore C. And we open up that one, we should be able to compare. Now if we compare both of these corners, you can see all the noise is gone, but also that vignetting is gone, where it darkens off towards the corner. Uh, that's now gone. So when I go to stack all of these calibrated oxygen frames, it'll all look good. That's it. It's pretty easy, right? You don't need a light frame, you don't need a light box, you just need a blank space, a blank wall, anything. If it's too bright or if it's too dark, Nina will tell you when you run that flat wizard and then you can adjust the lighting in there, you can set up a lamp in the room, try and make it as sort of even as possible so you don't want light just coming from one edge of it, but you know, shine some light, ambient light is fine and you don't need any fancy equipment. I really almost went down the road of buying a light panel. Now that might be convenient if you're out in the field and need to take light frames after your image run, but you can also use the sky. This trick works on the sky. So as it's on sunset and the sky is getting dimmer, it's not fully bright, there's no harsh sunlight, but it's still quite bright out there. Just run your flats then. It only takes like a few minutes and then you've got all of your flat frames ready for that imaging session. Easy, right? <music>